Hello all and welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover Amazon RDS multi AZDB instance deployment and failover, followed by a quick demo. Amazon RDS multi AZ deployment provides high availability, durability, and automatic failover support. Multi-AZ helps improve the durability and availability of a critical system, enhancing availability during planned system maintenance, DB instance failure, and availability zone disruption. RDS currently supports two kinds of multi-AZ deployments, multi-AZ DB instance deployment and multi-AZ DB cluster deployment. With multi-AZ DB instance deployment, RDS automatically provisions and manages a synchronous standby instance in a different AZ, which is completely a different independent infrastructure in a physically separate location. Multi-AZ deployments provide data redundancy, eliminates IO freezes during snapshots and backups, and minimizes latency spikes during system backups. RDS performs an automatic failover to the standby instance so that the database operations can be resumed as soon as the failover is complete. RDS multi-AZ deployment maintains the same endpoint for the DB instance after the failover so that the application can resume database operation without the need for manual administrative intervention. The key point to note here is the multi-AZ DB instance deployment is a high availability feature and not a scaling solution for read-only scenarios. The standby secondary replica can't be used to serve read traffic to serve read-only traffic, use a read replica. Multi-AZ deployments for Oracle, PostgreSQL, MySQL and MariaDB use Amazon technology, while SQL Server DB instances use SQL Server mirroring. An existing single AZ instance can be converted into a multi-AZ instance by modifying the DB instance without any downtime. In this demo, we would be creating an RDS multi AZ DB instance by choosing the multi AZ DB instance option in the availability and the durability section. Let's navigate to the RDS console. We already have a DB subnet group created the RDS demo subnet group currently spans across two availability zones navigate to the databases choose create database we will use the standard create option to create a multi AZ DB instance as it gives us more control over the configuration in the engine type choose MySQL. We will leave the edition and the version as default. In templates you can either choose the production or the dev test template for your deployment. The production template defaults to the multi AZ cluster while the dev test will default to a single DB instance. We will choose the dev test template. In the availability and durability section, we will choose the multi AZ DB instance. A multi AZ DB instance creates a primary DB instance and a synchronous standby DB instance in a completely different AZ. It provides high availability and data redundancy. But the standby DB instance does not support connections for read workloads. Let's quickly cover the other configuration and settings. 
DB instance identifier as database one, master username admin. We do not want to use secrets manager for handling the credentials for now. Enter master password and confirm the master password. Let's move to the instance configuration and storage. For DB instance class, we will select burstable classes. And let's select the T3 micro for the demo. General purpose SSD with allocated storage of 20 GB is fine. With 20 GB of storage, we will get a baseline IOPS of 3000 IOPS and a storage throughput of 125 megabits per second. If you want to increase the same, increase either the storage size or move to a provisioned IOPS storage type. We will disable the storage auto scaling for now. In terms of connectivity, let's keep it don't connect to an EC2 compute resource. We don't need it for the demo. Let's change the VPC from default to the custom VPC VPC A. DB subnet group is set to RDS demo subnet group, which we have already created. It spans across two AZs, the US East 1A and the US East 1B. Choose Yes for public accessibility. This will allocate an IP address for the database instance so that we can connect directly to the database from our device. However, note, it is not recommended to host your database in public subnets. For VPC security group, we will leave it to the default VPC security group, which allows all inbound and outbound traffic. Leave the RDS proxy in the unchecked state. Default certificate authority is fine to help us with the SSL or TLS connectivity. Additional configuration has the port and let's leave it to the default value of 3306. For database authentication, RDS supports password Kerberos and IAM database authentication to authenticate the database users. Let's stick to password based authentication. For monitoring, uncheck the enable enhanced monitoring. Let's check on some of the additional configurations. We'll leave the initial database name blank. Default parameter and option groups are fine as well. We'll disable the automatic backups for the database. Encryption with the default RDS KMS key is fine. Log exports unchecked. And auto minor version upgrade checked. This will automatically upgrade to new minor versions within the maintenance window. No preference on the maintenance window and leave the deletion protection unchecked. You can review your monthly cost based on the configurations. Multi AZ setup won't be covered in the free tier. Let's go ahead and choose create database. Database would take some time for provisioning. Let's wait for it to be available. If you track the status of the database changes, you will see it moving from creating to modifying and then available. A single DB instance is created and then modified to a multi AZ DB instance. Also note the RDS console may take some time to reflect the changes, especially the secondary instance AZ and change of the AZs in case of a failover. The RDS multi AZ DB instance is now in the available state. The primary region and AZ is US East 1B. Let's check the configuration which would give us information about the primary and secondary AZs. 
the primary zone is US East 1B. Multi AZ is enabled, but the secondary zone has not been reflected yet. Let's refresh and wait for it to be reflected. And the secondary zone is now reflected and shows US East 1A. So in our multi AZ DB instance setup, we have the primary instance in US East 1B and the secondary standby in US East 1A. Let's navigate to the logs and events to check on the events. We have some old logs, let's sort it by date. And we can see the DB instance created and modified to be converted to a multi AZ DB instance. Now that the RDS multi AZ DB instance has been created, let's deep dive into RDS multi AZ failover. With RDS multi AZ, Amazon RDS automatically switches to a standby replica in another availability zone. In case of a planned or an unplanned outage of the DB instance, the time taken for the failover to complete depends on the database activity and other conditions. However, can range typically between 60 to 120 seconds. However, large transactions or lengthy recovery process can increase the failover time. RDS handles failovers automatically, so you can resume database operations as quickly as possible without administrative intervention. The primary DB instance switches over automatically to the standby replica for any of the following conditions. Primary availability zone outage, loss of network connectivity to the primary instance, primary DB instance failure, DB instance server type changed, operating system of the DB instance is undergoing software patching, compute unit failure of the primary, storage failure on the primary or a manual failover of the DB instance initiated with the reboot with failover option. This is also referred to as the forced failover. RDS provides you an option to simulate the AZ failure and high availability by offering the option of forced failover. We can reboot the instance with the failover option. This option will initiate AZ level failover for the instance. The instance in the secondary AZ will become primary and the instance in the primary will become secondary. From the actions option, let's select the reboot option. It will give you an option to reboot with failover. Let's check the option and go ahead. The process will take some time depending upon the DB size and the transactions. But for our DB size, it should be done within a minute or so. The failover has been completed and the database is now available. Let's check the configuration again as the primary and secondary instance AZ should be switched. And the primary zone is reflected as US East 1A and the secondary zone is US East 1B. Let's check the logs and events as well. And it shows the multi AZ instance failover was started and successfully completed. So that's it for the RDS multi AZ DB instance demo where we created an multi AZDB instance and performed a manual failover. I hope you liked the demo. Thank you all. Alright, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, 
please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.